All right, fifth graders, welcome to, um, I guess it's week, unit five, week two, and we're going to be talking about myths, okay? So our learning targets for today, you will uh, create a myth anchor chart to demonstrate their, your prior knowledge of um, mythology, myths and mythology. You'll discuss and analyze Thor's magic hammer and then build academic oral language and vocabulary. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to, let's look at a blank page. No, we're gonna start filling this in. Okay, when we talk about myths, we have to think that, we have to understand that all, not, the vast majority of cultures have and created their own myths, whether it be the Greeks, the Chinese, the Egyptians, the Africans, pretty much all cultures and societies have developed myths. Um, the ones we are most familiar with, we're probably most familiar with the Greek and the Roman myths because we're, it's much more relatable in terms of um, we, we, we have a much closer, um, for the most part, as, as, a, as a nation, we have a much closer kind of uh, relationship to kind of Roman and Greek uh, history. Um, some of us are, you know, in terms of some of the African myths, um, some of the Chinese myths and the Egyptian myths we might have heard of, but we just don't understand. But a lot of, especially especially in, in terms of where we are, um, we hear more about the Greek and the Roman uh, myths. Um, as we look forward, you know, we have the Rick R Rorden book, you know, The Lightning Thief, and uh, Percy Jackson, the Percy Jackson and the Olympians um, series. Um, that's all mythology, and that's based on myth. And, and what what uh, Rorden has done is he's combined um, Greek mythology and he's put them together. And then if you if you read the Heroes of Olympus uh, series, which is another set of books, the, he's combined Roman and Greek mythology. Um, here we have the book Old Turtle. Old Turtle is very much, um, to, to my understanding, I think it's a Native American story about the how the earth was formed formed you know and then we have even you see mythology myths coming into movies um here we have the rock in the movie hercules now i haven't seen it so i don't know if it's good or if it's bad but we see myths throughout you know you talk about the avengers and you talk about you know the role of thor in the avengers and you start to see myths everywhere um so the question is as you look through your um as you look through your packet for this week. Um, the question is, what is a myth? What is the purpose of, of myths? How do you read a myth? And then who invented myths? And what I want you to do is just pause the video and I just want you to jot down ideas in terms of answering these questions. What is a myth? What is the purpose of myths? How do you read a myth? And then who invented myths? And then when you're done, restart the video and then check and see how you did. And it is important that you do pause the video, boys and girls, just to, just to see. All right, boys and girls, hopefully you have kind of gone through and, and kind of answered those questions to the best of your ability. Again, this is not something you need to know right now. This is about what you already know as a student. So when we ask, what is a myth? Okay, a myth is a story that explains something that occurs in nature. It might tell how the world began or explain why the world is the way it is. The main character is usually a god or goddess or a hero with special powers. Sometimes a hero is on a quest. So basically a myth is when an, an ancient society or an old culture tries to explain something they didn't understand. Okay, so looking at the purpose, um, long ago, people believed myths to be true and relied on these stories to explain events they did not understand. Today, myths help us see what events confused or interested people long ago. The explanations in myths are creative and fun. So basically, you had a world where things were happening and people did not understand what was going on. Okay, so human nature is to make to make un to try and understand the world around them. Now they didn't have the scientific prowess that we have now. They didn't know that the you know the sun was the center of the solar system and the Earth rotates around the sun and the Earth spins on on an axis and that's that's what causes day and night. So rather than because we didn't have that sophistication and that knowledge, we people would ask why. 
So what they would do, they made up a story. And they made up a story of Apollo, the, the, god, the god of sun, riding his chariot, his flaming chariot across the sky every day. Well, that's sun. That's the day. And that's how the day be, they understood the day. They didn't understand it as the Earth's um, rotation on the axis. And that's what causes the, you see the sun sometimes and sometimes you don't, you know. So it's, it's all about trying to make it sense of a world that you don't understand. All right. How do you read a myth? Um, the title often tells what event in nature the myth explains. Um, th it should be think. Think about how the event is explained. Look for a hero with extraordinary powers. Ask yourself, what does the, this hero do? How do the hero's actions help explain an event? And the vast majority of things, when you look at, you know, Percy Jackson, you look at um, Hercules, whether it be the the rock movie or the one, um, the cartoon version, it all explains something. It's all about helping understand the world around you. Okay. And then who invented myths? In ancient times, storytellers told myths to answer questions about the world. As the centuries passed, these stories were told and retold and then eventually written down. So it was, imagine the bedtime stories that you get told or you were read. Well, at some point in time, these were kind of those stories. And they were the stories that people would, would learn about to understand the world around them. And think about it as a science lesson to explain that. And we eventually we get to the point where we start understanding the world and we don't need these myths anymore. We have a better understanding, a scientific understanding of the world. So we don't need to know, well, it's a guy riding around on a flaming chariot and that's what the sun moving across the sky is. No, we know that it's the sun and it's based on the Earth's rotation. So it takes us time, and as we become more sophisticated as people, as humans, as a culture, we start to rely less and less on this, okay? All right, so now we're gonna focus on this right-hand side, and because I had some complaints last time, we've blown this up for you in terms of features of myths, okay? So myths often take place before time or recorded history as we know it began, okay? So we, we, Myths are often take place way before anyone was alive because then no one can say, that didn't happen, I was there, okay? All right, myths have gods, goddesses, and heroes with supernatural powers, all right? Um, myths have characters that are humans or human-like and experience human emotions. So they are similar to humans sometimes. Oftentimes, when we look at Greek and Roman mythology, and even, even Chinese and African and Egyptian, it was the interaction between the gods and goddesses and humans that made, that made the story really more understandable. Um, characters often perform heroic tasks or go on quests. That's the whole basis of, you know, Percy Jackson and, and the Olympians theory. It's, they're all, each book is about a quest. Um, myths often explain the worldview of a people or culture and may have religious elements. Now, at one point in time, um, w there was what, what was called a poly, um, a poly, oh, I can't think of the word right now, um, in which there was more than one god. And that's what the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, um, the Chinese to a certain extent, um, but they, they, each one of these gods controlled, or goddesses, controlled a certain aspect of their world, whether it be the rain, or whether it be the seasons, or death, or storms, and things like that. So it was very much a, um, it was very much a multi, they, they didn't have a god, they had several. It's polytheism is the word I'm looking for, I think. Sorry about that. Okay, and then finally, myths often explain the origins of the world its creatures or elements in nature. So again, it's a very, it's a way to understand what is happening in the world around them. And sometimes they make sense and sometimes, you know, we look back at them as 20, 21st, 20, you know, 20, 21st century learners and we're like, what were they thinking? That doesn't make any sense at all. But what you have to understand, they did not have the scientific um, sophistication and knowledge base that we have. So it's easy for us to look at, oh my goodness, those Greeks, I don't know what they were thinking, but 
it wasn't about that. It was about them trying to understand something that they didn't, couldn't understand at this point in time. All right. So that's the features of myths. Make sure that you fill out the page in your um, in your plat packet that that matches this. Okay. All right. Now comes our story. Thor's magic hammer. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video right now and I'd like you to read through this right by yourself, okay? So pause the video and read. When you are done, um, restart the video and we will talk about this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you just finished reading Thor's Magic Hammer. Um, I want to read this for you just because I think this is a very interesting story. It's got a very interesting ending to it. So here we go. Thor's Magic Hammer. Long ago, Thor, the Norse god of thunder, was shocked to discover that his magic hammer was missing. Without it, he couldn't create thunder and lightning. Thor asked Loki, a shape-shifting god, for help. Loki turned into a falcon and flew off to look for Thor's hammer. He learned that the king of the giants had stolen it. The king would return it if he could marry Freya, the goddess of love. When Loki presented the giant's terms, Freya refused to marry a hideous giant. The gods held a meeting to figure out what to do. They decided to trick the giant in order to retrieve Thor's hammer. They said Thor, they said Thor should pretend to be Freya. Thor reluctantly dressed in bridal clothes and a veil. Loki disguised himself as a maidservant and the two set off. At a pre-wedding feast, the, god, the king of the giant was amazed at the appetite of his bride-to-be. When he lifted the veil, he saw Thor's eyes glowering angrily at him. Thor told him the bride, Loki, excuse me, told him the bride had not slept in anticipate, anticipation of the wedding. The giant believed Loki and called for the magic hammer to be brought to bless his bride. At the sight of it, Thor ripped off his disguise, grabbed the hammer, and killed the giant king with it. Thor killed every giant in the banquet hall too. Then Thor and Loki went home. To celebrate, to celebrate the return of his hammer, Thor created the fiercest thunder and lightning storm the world has ever seen. So what I want you to do right now, boys and girls, is I want you to spend some time and I want you to answer those two questions that are in the, sec the last page of day one. Um, one important feature of myths is that they involve characters who are gods and or heroes. Did you see this feature in Thor's magic hammer? and then quote directly from the text to support your answer. And then the second one is, in myths, the characters often perform heroic, heroic tasks or go on quests. What scenes in Thor's magic hammer make up the quests? Point to specific places in the text. And I want you to, don't point to, but actually put that information in, in your response, okay? So why don't you take some time, pause the video, take some time and answer, and then when you're done, restart the video. And I have one more thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, today we learned the key features of myths and we discussed the important ideas and details of Thor's magic hammer. Tomorrow we'll read and analyze another myth and then we'll compare and contrast, contrast the myths to deepen our understanding. So that's all for today, boys and girls. Make sure that you filled everything out. Make sure that you um, have read through Thor's magic hammer. If you have not, please take time to make sure you read that on your own because that's part of this is that you are also taking on your own leaders, your own learning. Okay. All right. That's it for today. Um, but we will talk to you well in guided reading group, but we will also talk to you tomorrow with video number two.